Ukraine says Russia launched a massive aerial attack overnight. The country's air forces detected dozens of missiles and drones targeting nearly every region of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukrainian officials confirmed that a British citizen was killed by a Russian attack in the Donetsk region. Salma Abdelaziz has been following this. And Salma, let's just talk about the British citizen who died here. This was a target on a hotel in uh, the region of Donetsk. It's a hotel, as I understand it, that many media outlets have used before. Yes, and this is definitely an attack that has caused shock waves through our community, yeah. a community of journalists. This is a hotel, Hotel Sapphire in Krematorsk. And Krematorsk is very close to the front lines, but it is a Ukrainian-controlled city. So people use it as a base, NGO workers, journalists use it as a base in order to cover that conflict. And that's exactly what this Reuters crew was doing when they were staying at this hotel in Kramatorsk. It was struck uh, by Russia, of course, several people wounded, one American wounded, and unfortunately, as you mentioned, a British citizen who was hired to work with that Reuters crew to keep them safe, a former British soldier, was killed, uh, Ryan Evans in that attack. President Zelensky, of course, squarely pointed the finger at Russia and called this a deliberate attack, said that it is intended to make it ever more difficult and dangerous for journalists to cover that story. Um, in terms of this attack, I mean, we, we obviously report on these attacks all the time, but this was so widespread, wasn't it, geographically? It's quite extraordinary. So this morning, uh, Ukraine's Air Force saying that they received... Uh, drones, missiles, attacks coming to nearly every single region in Ukraine. What was the result of that? We know three people killed so far, power outages across the country, people told to run into bomb shelters in Kyiv and other cities and towns. It's a reminder yet again of how Russia targets civilian infrastructure as a way of expanding the cost of this war very far from those front lines as well. Is there a sense that this was in retaliation in relation to Ukraine's advance that continues in the Kursk region? We saw, remember last week, Putin and vowing a response, a strong response to that. I mean, is this all in the calculus of, of what has been happening in Kursk? One can assume, of course, that it is within that wider context that Russia continues to respond and continues to try to find ways to weaken Ukraine, to weaken President Zelensky's standing, to weaken unity within the country, again, far from those front lines where soldiers are fighting. But this is part of a continued Russian strategy. We've seen this since the very beginning of the conflict, where Russia has tried to target power infrastructure, water infrastructure, just the very basics of life to make it difficult to just exist in Ukraine. Okay. So I want to take a look at Russia launching this missile and drone attack aimed at energy infrastructure really across Ukraine during the overnight hours. As we heard from some uh, Abdulaziz, four people were killed in total, as Ukraine's Air Force says. It detected missiles and drones targeting almost all regions, from the frontline eastern regions of uh, Kharkiv in the east, but even down to Odessa in the south, Kiev to more of the central part of the country. So obviously a wide swath here. So I just want to get your take. What is the strategy here, especially across such a wide array of targets at once? Well, good morning, Omar. Yeah, the big strategy for the Russians is uh, to inflict as much terror as possible on the civilian population. Uh, a lot of the targets involve the civilian infrastructure, especially the heating uh, system and the power plants. Uh, so because all of that is fairly centralized in the Ukrainian cities, uh, that makes for really ripe targets from a military perspective. And so what the Russians are doing is they're trying to inflict basically hell on earth for the civilian population. And then what they also want to do is cut off as much as they possibly can uh, supply routes and uh, the ability of the Ukrainian military to reinforce uh, their uh, soldiers and, uh, and uh, Marines in the different areas of Ukraine, especially in the east, but also eventually in the Kursk region where they've, of course, invaded that part of Russian territory. And, you know, you mentioned the Kursk region. Uh, just we're going to zoom in. But just for viewers, it's this small region up here uh, in the northeast part of the country. But as you come in a little bit closer as well, you can see this is right now just zoomed in a little bit for our folks. Um, but as those broad strikes have been happening, President Vladimir Zelensky has talked about how they've advanced up to three kilometers in Russia's Kursk region and have taken control uh, of two more settlements. What is the significance here and what are your realistic expectations for that campaign? 
So what the Ukrainians are doing, Omar, is they're basically taking as much land as they can. They're not going to be able to advance extremely far into Russia, at least uh, not under normal circumstances. But what they are trying to do is they're trying to grab as much land as they can to swap potentially for the land that Russia has taken in Ukraine. They're also taking Russian prisoners, and they've already exchanged some prisoners uh, with the Russians. So the Ukrainians are getting their prisoners back from Russia, and uh, the Russians are getting their prisoners back uh, from Ukraine. And that is part of the uh, of the effort that Zelensky has in order to take the war to a part of Russia, uh, but also to tell the Russians that their border is not in, in, uh, inviolate. They can actually go in and, and uh, move fairly much at will in certain parts of the border region along Ukraine's border with Russia. There was a massive Russian assault on Ukraine overnight. Just moments ago, the Russia's defense ministry announced it hit all its targets. More than 100 missiles and up to 100 drones hit multiple cities across the country, leaving at least four people dead. President Zelensky is calling it one of the largest attacks that Ukraine has faced yet. All right, to you, uh, Brigadier General. How long can Ukraine continue to fend off Russia when you see an attack like this one? Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, you know, that's a very good question. Um, this is a war of attrition. Neither side is truly capable of conducting decisive military actions against the other. So what you're going to see is continued actions like this, you know, attacks against the people, attacks against hospitals and schools and apartment buildings. I mean, that's right out of Vladimir Putin's playbook because that's really all that he can do. Um, his military is just not good enough to, to really penetrate Ukraine. They've been in the Donbass now for two and a half years. Again, a war of attrition. He's simply targeting energy. He's, tar he's trying to make things painful for the people, try to put political pressure on Zelensky. Um, you know, and I, I just don't think that that's going to work because the Ukrainian people are incredibly strong. Yeah, I mean, the Ukrainian people having been there a, a couple of different times, um, it just makes their resolve even stronger uh, when they see Russia do something like this. But the question is, do they have the weapons? Do they have the ammunition uh, and, and, the, and the number of soldiers that they need to try uh, and continue this until which time they're hopefully able, um, in Zelensky's words, to, to end this war? 